Do you know your risk posture? With Crossbow, you can run and analyze adversarial campaigns in real time against your production infrastructure to validate your intrusion detection, antivirus, phishing protection, and incident response. Know your cyber exposure with Crossbow. So we're here with Bryson. Hey, how's it going? Every day is a holiday. For, you know, awesome. Thanks for having us here uh, today. And Bryson Bort, you are the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Grim. Yep. Nice to have you. Thanks. Uh, and you want to talk about, you opted in our kind of like roulette of security question death. <laughs> you <laughs> opted for the future of security, which is awesome. Yep. So we, I mean, we threw darts to the board and that's what came up. Awesome. So what are some of the major changes you hope to see in security over the next five years? Oh, so I, this is me getting to have a choice. I didn't, all right. I didn't know we were going to go that way. Um, what would I like to see have happen? Hmm. That wasn't the question, <laughs> but okay, go for it. Have fun. Major, we'll say it again then. Major changes. Wait, th this is the sober version, I promise. Major changes you hope to see in security over the next five years. Uh, I think I'd like to, to start, because this has really been a, a trend this week at, at Black Hat thus far, and I know that certainly it's also building up a lot with DEF CON, which is um, the community continues to become more inclusive. Um, more welcoming of, of diversity and, and folks learning and getting started in this. I know a lot of us who started back in the day, uh, things were a little little harsher for the beginners. Um, and I, I like to say that, I mean, nobody comes out of the womb knowing everything. So the only way you learn is if somebody well, gives Paul you that did. chance. Paul did. So, no. well, he, and he hasn't grown very far no, since, I, I can tell. I was just going to say, um, even when I got started in information technology, I feel it's different than today. I was kind of thrown into the fire. I was expected to work on a problem for at least a half an hour and have an intelligent question before I asked a question to get help. I feel like it was a little harsher. I do feel like in security we're more accepting, although there still is that undertone. I know because I have to like remove comments from some of our social media <laughs> that is really... I, I'm sorry, I, I drink. It's, it's, it's happening. But it's exemplary of what you're, you're talking about, not being welcoming. Uh, and how are you going to learn if you don't ask questions or you don't come to conferences uh, like this, even if you don't know much about security or anything about security? And, and, why, I, and why I think that's important, because, I, I mean, so that's great. That sounds, you know, that's a good tagline. Let's be nicer. But what's, what do you get for that? And what I think you get for that is different perspectives coming to the table makes better security. Right. If you're just designing from one perspective, I'm sorry, you're not going to be doing something that great. You're not going to do something, you're not going to build something that everybody can understand and use. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, it, it's interesting. I've got a, a good friend who has a talk that he's uh, working on and has given it several times. So I'm okay talking about it. He says, even in security now, and for the last 10 years, we've had three kinds of people. Hello? What? Kent? This is God? <laughs> even in security as it is now, for the last 10 years or so, we've had three kinds of people. We have nine to fivers, 10 to twoers, and 24 seveners. And if you're not a 24 7 er you're not learning enough to, to keep up. You're not moving forward. And so, in a sense, I'm going back to what you said about it used to be harsher, and, and you backed him up on that. And in a sense, it was harsher, but in a sense now, it's also much harsher now, because there's so much broader of a range of information you need to ingest before you can actually start. Well, so, I mean, I, I think that also speaks to, as the community's grown up, and we're growing up, I mean, we're, we're an older crowd here sitting, and Speak what? <laughs> what is going on <laughs> now? I mean, it's a few grays. I mean, his beard's purple. That's to cover the gray. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> yes. It actually took better on the gray than it did on the other. No, but your 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 mission changes, right? It's no longer can I be the best tech guy. It's how do I help other folks be better tech guys? Yeah. That that was it. That's all I got. No, <laughs> and, uh, and that's a good thing. <laughs> well, that that was all you got. Yes, yeah. that's, that's it. No, that's all good. right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, drop the mic. We're done. It was, it was so prolific, Bryce, and that was profound. 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 I'm not profound. prolific. Profound and prolific, perhaps. No, just profound. No. Are we ready for question this two? Is, this is prolific. <laughs> That's <What>? terrifying. <laughs> what are some of does the it, major? Does it frighten you? <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the major challenges we'll face in security in the near future? Uh, I think I think the challenges that we're going to face is that the continued integration of humanity and computers. 
computers are becoming more of a way that we live as opposed to before where it was more of a abstract way to process data and to make th make things go quicker. Now it's becoming more of the way we just do our lives. It was a tool, now it's a cornerstone. Exactly. And that that's going to have significant and far-reaching changes that I don't think there's any subject matter expert who can truly understand the what that means either in function or from a security perspective, the exponentially larger surface area that comes from all of those infinite relationships that we have yet to process. Along those lines, uh, I want to ask you the privacy question that I had <clears throat> Excuse me, on this list. Will our privacy continue to erode or will there be champions for our privacy that allow us to maintain it to a certain degree? I think privacy is going to continue er to erode and I think the call to action there for the community is looking at a lot of the companies that are either um, controlling data, assembling data in all sorts of different forms and guises, whether consumers are aware of it or not. And then following, of course, one of the latest buzzwords of this year has been the introduction of artificial intelligence now for security. And what does that mean with artificial intelligence now, manipulating that data, collecting that data, and doing things um, with unconscious biases programmed into them? And who's, who's looking over the shoulder of that? With, with people willing to sell passwords for a chocolate bar, do you really think that they're going to stand up and act for their privacy? For two chocolate bars. <laughs> no, it, this is a challenge. It's I an mean, education problem. I mean, that was a problem. real case, you know. Yeah, it's an education problem. It's, we have, it's, it's one of those things like the, you're the frog in the water and the temperature keeps rising and the temperature keeps rising and the next thing you know, you're boiled. Yeah. And it's too late at that point. And most consumers don't even realize what's happening. Uh, it's there's it's transparent it's hidden people are making these decisions people are doing these things uh, government of course is always going to be behind the power curve because regulations follow regulations typically don't lead the way what do you think that point at which we're boiled is what do you think the point at which everybody goes oh god we're screwed so you saw Terminator okay that's a little extreme <laughs> uh, I I don't think I don't know um, I don't think there'll be a literal point where we, we have reached that, but I think there's going to be increasing well, instances. What about if we're batteries to power all of the machines? <laughs> that, is, that is where I was going, is our robot overlords will tell us when it's too much. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. <laughs> <laughs> what about if you're the crazy inventor guy developing artificial intelligence way out in the woods and you invite someone in to... You didn't see that movie either? Ex Machina, Ex Machina, Ex Machina. Oh, oh Deus yeah, Ex yeah. Machina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that movie was interesting because you, you could really tell what the what the truth was with what the artificial intelligence was doing. Yeah. Um, I was reading an article today, in fact, and they were talking about that um, as we start to push out artificial intelligence, one of the caps to put on it is so that it can feel pain because there, the logic there being is that that'll be a natural empathy check to kind of keep it. In you know, in going. yeah, except that they're also going to be like, wait, you caused me pain. Screw you! I'm wiping your ass out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's interesting how that all. Well, then be nice to your robots. But but they're just robots. Uh, ah, look, you know what? You know what? This video is going to get played in ten years, and you're going to get flayed by the overlords. They're coming after you. <laughs> yeah, you're first. We had nothing to do with this. I love robots. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> we say thank you.